Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is sampling error? So let's go to the whiteboard and discuss this in further detail. All right, here we are at the whiteboard, so let me help you understand sampling error. It's really a pretty simple concept, but it's a very important concept to understand if you're going to become proficient at statistical analysis. So let's begin our discussion by drawing out a population distribution. There it is, normally distributed. And let's say that this population has one million parts in it. One million, so that's pretty big. And someone goes along and measures all million parts and calculates the average. All right, there it is, and we call it mu, meaning it's the average from the population. If it's a sample, let me write this down, mu equals population. Average. And another symbol we use is x bar. x bar equals a sample average. There we go. So mu, we took all million parts, calculated the average. Let's say, for example, it is 5. Now, that obviously took a long time. Someone else comes along and says, I need to know the average of this population, but I don't have time to measure all million parts. So I'm going to estimate the average, the population average, by using a sample. And this is a randomly selected sample. Let's say it is a sample size of 20, just for sake of argument. So you're just taking 20 out of this million. Now you go ahead and use that, and you calculate the average of your sample. That's why we call it x bar. x bar, and let's say it is 4.8. All right. So we tried to estimate, with a sample size of 20, we tried to estimate the population average. Now, in reality, it's 5. But you say, from your analysis, it's 4.8. Now, what would you call that, then? This is the actual value, and this is the value you calculated. Well, then, I think it only makes sense that you would call that the error. The error. That's right. Because this is your estimate, this is the true value, so that distance from the estimate to the true value is called error. That's your error. Where does the error come from? The error comes from sampling. Very good. So what do we call this error? In statistics, we call it the sampling error. And we take sampling error into account in many of our calculations, and you should. And in many studies, uh, such as hypothesis studies, if you get 30 or greater, a sample size of 30 or greater, you can probably ignore sampling error. So in other words, as the sample gets larger, you can get to the point you can ignore sampling error. You know, like I say, in most studies, it's around 30, at least for hypothesis testing. All right, uh, and this is what sampling error is. And how do we take sampling error into account? Well. There's this uh, value in statistics that we use quite often, and it's called degrees of freedom. And lots of times they just use the, the initials there, DF, to tell you degrees of freedom. If you go to a statistical table, such as a T table, F table, etc., and you see degrees of freedom on one of the columns or rows, or someplace in the table, degrees of freedom, you know they're taking into account sampling error. If you go to another table, such as the Z table, guess what? It has no degrees of freedom. What does that tell you? It means that table, that Z table, does not take into account sampling error. So again, sampling error is that distance from your estimate to the true value uh, due to sampling. We call it sampling error. And we take into account sampling error in our calculations by something we call degrees of freedom. If a table has a degrees of freedom in the table, you know it takes into account sampling error. If a given statistical table, such as the z-statistic, does not have degrees of freedom in the table, you know it does not take into account sampling error. Uh, when can you 
When can you ignore sampling error? When does it get so small? Well, oftentimes for hypothesis tests anyway, 30 is the number. So if you get a uh, sample size of 30 or greater, oftentimes you can ignore sampling error. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful uh, on helping you understand the concept of sampling error. Now let's go back and finish up this uh, discussion. All right, hopefully that discussion of sampling error helped you out, helped you understand that concept. Hey, remember, if you ever need help preparing for an ASQ exam, be sure and check us out. There's the website, www.alphatc.com. There's my email address, john.lee at alphatc.com. And feel free to contact me should you have any questions. I have many websites. I have a website for every certification preparation class that I offer, and I offer a lot of them, as you can see. So here are all the different websites. If you want to put this on pause and find the one of interest, you can do that. Or you can just go to www.alphatc.com, go to videos in the top right corner of the home page, down it'll drop, and you can pick out the class of interest, click on it, and it will take you to this uh, website also. So however you decide to do that, Hopefully you will keep us in mind for all your uh, ASQ certification need. All right, thank you for watching this video. Have a great day and goodbye.